I'm a van of cane. And I'm Jake Paul. Yeah. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, boo. What are you doing? Uh... Welcome back to another episode of Post to Post Podcast. I'm Matt Small, and with me as always is Chris Ronan. How's your week been? What's going on, buddy? Same old here. You know, the usual. Mm -hmm. Just grinding it out, working. Loving that Whalers jersey we were shitting on last week. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I mean, I said we'd see him around here, and boom, here we go. <laughs> this isn't the retro, though. This is the old school one, Pat Verbeek, back in the day. Mm -hmm. 20 years in the show. Fucking almost 90 points. Couple never, seasons. Never heard of him until, uh, until I saw you yeah, wear him. Until you came downstairs. I didn't know you were going to wear a jersey, too. So I, I, it's kind of ridiculous. Right before before I left to come here, I was I had these. I have a, a a Hanson brother one, and I got this Jim Craig one that I'm wearing now. And uh, I wasn't gonna wear it, and then for some reason I was like, oh, let me wear it for tonight's episode. And then I come downstairs, and here you are wearing yeah. that jersey. Pretty funny. We talked all jerseys last week, and then we both show up uh, wearing one. Wearing jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into it tonight and talk about the NHL's plan for next season. Yeah, man, they uh, they seem to be adjusting on the fly. Uh, they were catching a lot of heat from, you know, social media, the, the masses about NBA, NFL, and MLB all have plans in place. Like, they're all actively putting their feelers out there, but the NHL's been pretty quiet, which, I mean, that's that's kind of the NHL's thing. I think they fly under the radar, don't you? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, and no. Sometimes th there's a few things that like kind of go under the radar. Like you've you've definitely seen trades that you're like, oh, when did he go there? When did when did he get on this team? And then you you find out like, oh, it was like mid season he was traded. So it is sometimes they do fly out on the radio, but something like big like this, it's, it's yeah, it's, hard it's for noticeable them. that they're they're almost like dodging the issue, but they're not. I think they're just trying to hash it out. There's a lot of stuff going on in the back end that I don't think we should get into today. But I've heard a lot of things about like the NHL and the Players Association disagreeing on like past agreements, stuff like that, you know, like the financial aspect of it, which is huge, you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're just talking about Gary Bettman and how, uh, not how, but why he thinks he can't do it January 1st is because uh, of the post, especially with COVID and everything, you got families going over for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and it's that time of year, and we have the second wave of COVID hitting. So January 1st doesn't look good in that yeah, aspect. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't do it to begin with i mean that's such short notice now if they haven't even come up with that so uh one thing i saw was mid-january now like january 15 would be the first game of the season and january 2 would be uh training camps you know mm -hmm. get the players report into the camps and even training camps uh i was hearing that it's going to be minimal like very little players on the ice it's going to be very very strict so uh i wouldn't know how they do it i mean we, they had the bubble set up which i think they did a great job with but I think with the second wave and everything hitting, I think this will be even harder for the NHL to... Yeah, that's the thing, too, that kind of took me off guard was uh, how well they did it last season and then hearing them, like, not really have a plan yet. You know, like, I kind of expected them to have something right out the gate where they took care of it so well last year. Right. But uh, we're seeing kind of cool rumblings now about uh, a couple teams, cities are doing... Uh, talking about doing outdoor games. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be kind of cool. What do you think? Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool. I don't know if they can do it. Um, I... I... <laughs> So they want to do it, or they talked about doing it at Fenway Park, and I guess uh, they were shoot out as soon as they're. They, I guess Fenway Park wants fans there, but they don't think they can get them there. So Fenway Park, if they're not getting revenue, they don't want anything to do with it. Right. So w one thing, I'm just going to jump in real quick. What were the four cities that they said? I, I saw Boston, L.A., Philly, and there was one other. I can't think of who it was. Ah, uh, shit. Was it Vancouver? It was, I don't Chicago? think it was Vancouver. I think okay. it was Chicago. Okay. I'll have to, we'll have to double check that. Yep. Um, yeah, but there was four major cities. Uh, the, the reason why I don't know it offhand is because I read it, and I was just like, there's no way this is going to go through. I think it might, man. I, I don't know if they could do the full season outside, obviously, and I don't think that's the plan. I think they would do some games outside, you know? Yeah, some, but to do an entire season, like, mm -hmm. outdoors, th there's no way. Boston right now is, like, it's... Where are we? It's December fourth, right? Yeah. And, it's and it's like just sixty cold. degrees outside. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's and uh, the other thing is the season's looking to go until like early July too. Like you're not gonna have good ice conditions outside, pal. You know? At all. Um, but I I I just I don't know. I I heard that Fenway is like not gonna be the place either. Like they did like the Winter Classic out there, and it was okay. Like the sight lines aren't phenomenal, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so. I mean, where else would they go? And the other aspect is that the MLB had a whole season at Fenway. MLB, yeah, MLB. Mm -hmm. Whole season at Fenway for the Red Sox with no fans, but now they're going to do 
the NHL's with fans. Dirty, not dirty work, but do the work for them and have fans. Right. I mean, it's, it's it, money's money, right? It but, is. Hmm. Uh, I, I get that they're trying to, you know, be safe, but um, eh, there's there's ways of doing it, and like like we just talked about how Fenway is kind of like pushing. I wouldn't say pushing out the NHL, but saying, you know, we need revenue. We didn't have the fans for the MLB, uh, even though the MLB was up in flames almost a few weeks into it. We're just like, it was, what was it, Florida? Yeah, or the Marlins. The Marlins were just like COVID ridden. And no, yeah, like, and just had, traveling like. And teams are just nuts. like, we do not want to play these guys. Yeah. So the yeah. MLB took a big hit. And I think the NHL. See, saw that and doesn't you're, want to do that. You're seeing it in the NFL too now. Like the Baltimore Ravens and Steelers game just happened this week. I think it was delayed like three or four weeks. Yeah, I'm not I'm not huge into the NFL, but the bunch of guys that I work with, uh, and uh, was it Wednesday night? I had a little break and they had a game on Wednesday like, afternoon this? football. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, what the hell is this? I've never heard of this before. I right. Yeah, and I guess a lot of postponed games and stuff. Yeah, for sure. So with postponed games in the NFL. What are the odds that there's going to be a lot of postponed games in the NHL? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's, it is what it is. I mean, that's, that's how they've had to work with it. And I think that that's what it's going to be for the NHL too. Yeah. You know? uh, they are trying to do some work here. We um, are trying to figure out COVID plans for the 2021 season or the divisions. Yeah. How the, uh, I guess all, um, what am I trying to say here? All Canadian teams are going to be playing each other. Yeah, they, they've had like um, a lot of border issues in general, just trying to get over the border and everything. Um, so I think they're trying to do like, hey, here's the Canadian division, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, the map looks really nice. It's a lot of travel for the Canadian teams, but there's no way around it if they can't get across the state lines like that, you know, oh. the country lines. Um, it's, I mean, it it looks like it could work out. Uh, hey, it's one way to get a Canadian team out of the first round. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see who dominates that division, though the Canadian division. Dude, they're gonna be like the odds are that they got a, what a twenty five percent chance of being in the cup. Yeah, you know that's huge for Edmonton. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's massive for Edmonton. Oh well, I guess well, uh, playoffs would look different. Actually, I wasn't thinking about that because I was thinking that uh, I think I don't the, know how they do that. Do I you? think the playoffs would go back to um, the. The bowl, or the whatever, bubble again, the bubble yeah, 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 right, right. I think it was easier for them, yeah. But I, oh, now that we're so talking about that, I don't then know, the Canadian team wouldn't. Canadian well, team, no, they would because the division standings are what get you into the playoffs. But I think the standings would change, so I think maybe the top three teams in each division would go in because I think they would need less teams in the bubble. They wouldn't do sixteen. I don't, I don't think so. I think it'd be even less than that. No, no way. I don't, I don't think so. I think they would. Like when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking. We have to treat this like a regular season as much as possible. I've heard 56 and 52 games is like the agreed upon number. So they're going to play out those 56 games and they're going to realign the divisions and they're going to do the standings and and the playoffs how they normally would, I would think, but in a bubble, like you're saying, you know, because think about how many teams they had in the bubble last season. It was more than the regular playoffs, you know, right? They brought in what? 22. How many teams went? I forget. I think less than that. It was nuts, man. It was like almost more than half the league just to get in and try and qualify for sure. You know, um, I just you say it's gonna they they're trying to make this as normal as possible, but I don't think it's gonna be because you you watched you watched the bubble playoff hockey and it didn't feel like playoff hockey. You thought I, I you don't like, think it did, but at, at the end of the day, no double. What did they go? How many overtimes did Tampa go? Oh, that was fucking playoff hockey. Yeah. That was sick. That was, yeah, but at, at the same time, you're like, oh okay, like there's no fans. It's like. They made it good, man. I liked what it. What is this? I liked uh, one thing they did that was hilarious. Someone got a hat trick, and they had like the employees, whoever was working in the bubble, like walk down the long ass <laughs> oh. bleachers and throw a hat. <laughs> that's one <laughs> like thing. Twelve that was, hats on the ice. That's one thing that I thought was cool. Like the employees that were there were able to just kind of sit wherever they wanted and yeah. just like watch it. I'm like the only fans. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh God. Speaking of only fans, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> trying to get money over here. Um, but yeah, what do you think about these divisions? Looking at them, like. Look at it like a not. I know we just said it's not going to be a regular season, but look at it like as if it is. You know, what do you think? So, should we just should we just break down what it is? Yeah, the Bruins division. Uh, all right, so the Eastern Division, uh, which the Bruins are in, you get the Bruins, the New York Islanders, the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils, Flyers, Caps, Penguins, and Buffalo Sabers. I think that's 
That's a good fucking. That's a good division. Yeah, that's tight. That's gonna, I be, would watch that's gonna be a tough every run. single game. Yeah, I would watch every single game. And it, it's kind of cool that like looking at this map. We'll have it up for you guys so you can see too. Yeah. Um, the amount of like reduced travel time. Like these these guys have it so it made so in this quick. division, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you could do you could do back to back like double header games. Yeah, in right. One day. You could drive from uh, Madison Square Garden down to <laughs> fucking New Jersey in especially, a couple hours. Especially in New York, the Rangers Islanders, they mm-hmm. could they could just go back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll talk about the Southern Division. You got the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning. You got the Carolina Hurricanes, Nashville Predators, St. Louis Blues, uh, Chicago Blackhawks, uh, Red Wings, and Columbus Blue Jackets. That's yikes. Yeah, that's, I think Tampa's that's, coming out of that one. Don't yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about last episode how uh, Tampa kind of flew through the the other season, and yeah. we we're like, uh, yeah, right, be another one. Yep. <laughs> They got it. Yeah, Tampa, so that's Tampa's a, got a mid. That's something to consider too. Just because, like, I was thinking about it, like, like a regular season, they're in these divisions. Oh, blah blah blah. They'll still play outside. They're not playing outside of these divisions. No, they're only playing those. They're same only teams. playing the same teams. So, hey, if a Tampa, team what has, do you think? Fifty-six and zero. Oh, oh, you think Vegas will have odds on that, man? Oh my god, I put insane. twenty dollars down on that. See what happens. <laughs> I'm not a betting man, but I'll I'll start if this yeah. is, if this is gonna go through. I'll make a shit ton of money. Fifty-six and zero. Isn't that insane? Who's the worst team in that division? Do you think at the Blackhawks? It's got to be Detroit. You think Detroit? I think Detroit's worse than the Blackhawks. Detroit, Blackhawks, Panthers. Panthers are getting better. Yeah, Panthers are getting better. They got they got they got a good core down there. I think they can grow. Um, the Hurricanes are always growing. Columbus has surprised us. You know, I think it's really just Chicago and Detroit for the bottom barrel. Can we talk about how I fucking hate Carolina's like celebrations? Oh, after each you're game. gonna get into that, man. Fuck them, man. No. That's you see that shit in like Europe, like the KHL and shit. You see, you ever see the one? I, I don't know who the goalie is, but like the goalie like took like everything off and like was like s- kneeling. I don't know, like yeah, like kneeling on top of the net and like like an orchestra, like orchestrating the, yeah, yeah, the crowd. Doing yeah, yeah. It. I'm like yep. what the hell is this? Yep. And Carolina's doing the same shit. They're like at Fortnite and everything. I'm like, oh, get out of here! You're a professional league. They are all, like the team that's on the verge of not being a team anymore. Like, what do you want them to do? They're desperate. Yeah. They got to do something. They do to get, something for get their some fans. fans, and they are. You know, it worked. Yeah, it got a lot of buzz around the league. Um, I mean, their fans personally love it. So, you know what I mean. They're, it's working, you know. Um, I mean, you can hate it all I, I you want, but you got to do what you got to do. It's making gotta do. a disgrace out of the league. I, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't go as as far as to say that. You don't personally. think so? No. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's definitely an opinion that some people have. Mm-hmm. Don Cherry. Yeah, well, me. That's yep. why he doesn't have a mic anymore. Bring him back. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Make Don Cherry great again. Uh, Western Division time. We got Minnesota Wild, Dallas Stars, the Colorado Avalanche, um, Arizona Coyotes. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, Anaheim Ducks. We have the San Jose Sharks and the LA Kings. Uh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be a tight one too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Dallas shocked the world last season. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's San Jose might have a shot. Mm, <laughs> you think so? After everything they've moved, San Jose- what do they have? They got Brent Burns. They got Carlson. We were just talking. They don't about, have much. <laughs> they, yeah. They 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 don't have. We were just were you, talking. Were you, about, wait. Were you being serious? They might have a shot. No, because you know how like they're like always like kind of first in like the Western, and yeah. then, like, they get to like the they always get to like the playoffs and just shit the bed. Yeah, yeah, like yep, that's just the sure. San Jose for way. Sure. Yep. I was but, speaking about San Jose. Um, is Martin Jones still on the team? Yeah, I believe so. Okay, because we're uh, we're going through we're going through all the trades and signs for the goalies in the past few months, and the list just keeps going. The, the the signs and the trade it's it's unbelievable. I'm trying to like catch up and like I still got I got a full paper and I, I there's still you more ran out of room, through. dude. Yeah. I, I ran out yeah. of room. Uh, but the reason why I was bringing this up is because San Jose now is Devin Dubnik in their hands. Devin yeah. Dubnik is a great goalie, yeah, and if they sure. have Martin Jones and Devin Dubnik, you know you got two solid goaltenders in net that's yeah. gonna help you out. Yeah, for sure. That's a nice one A one B. Oh yeah. So that's why I wanted to bring it up because if you got two solid Goalies, especially in a division like this, if this is going to happen, uh, with you know Vegas and Dallas, Arizona, you know, especially the Kings, you know, you need you need solid you need solid goalies in the net. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The, like I said, uh, said to you the other day, the the one A or the one B is is the new thing. You know. Yep. You, mm-hmm. you need that to thrive in the NHL now. And I mean, look, you got Colorado, Dallas, Vegas. Uh, I mean, those three, I think, are 
are like going. You know, they're going to make it in yeah. the top of that division. But four of the other five are, are jiving. You know, right. they could they could be buckling for the next position. You know, right. And uh, last but not least, this is the one I wanted to talk about because I feel like we could just keep going with this. So we got the Northern Division, which is the all Canadian teams. The great White Northern the great Division. Great White North. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> so you got the Canucks, Flames, Oilers, Jets, uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, Ottawa Senators, and the Habs. I, if this was on every night, I, I'd watch it. Yeah, it's gonna be great to see the Battle of Alberta over and over, over and, and over, over again, again this season. You know, just watch Oilers just like shit the bed, just beat the bag out of each other, and they get the playoffs, <laughs> and they just everyone's hurt. <laughs> so, you think Canadians? How? Huh? So, I'm not even saying this from like a Boston perspective, but like the Canadians, I think their signings and what they're going for, and I don't think it's working for them. I think they're like they're that team that doesn't know: Are we rebuilding? Are we yeah. doing what we want to do? And I think a big pressure on that is the fans. You yeah. know. It's like you never want to say that you're rebuilding the fans. will go fucking crazy. Yeah, you know? right. Do we need this defenseman? Nah, we need another. We need to get another goal scorer. Yeah. We got Carey Price in that. <laughs> right. And then you, you see Carey Price. I love Carey Price. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's been in the league for how long? And I think he's the way the Canadians have it set up, where now he's going to make at least 30, 40 saves a game. Just to, and he could do it most nights, mm-hmm. but the, he has the nights where he gets lit up. And you're like, this is this is why you need but good that's, defense. That's that wear and tear that you're putting on a goalie that could do something for you. He's he's probably, in my opinion, he's gonna be the next Henrik Lund- Lundqvist. Oh, easily. You know, and he's gonna bounce out of there and try and get a cup. Exactly. You know? But he needs to get. I still say he needs to get out of Montreal. If he goes, if he gets out of Montreal, goes to like another team, uh, say uh, Toronto, like uh, Joe Thornton. Uh, they got a shot at the cup there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, did you oh, just puke in your mouth a little bit? That's brutal. <laughs> I don't know what went through his mind. You're talking about old age. Yeah. Where you, he <laughs> Has he got like, dementia? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, I love San Jose. He goes, yeah, I think I have a shot with a cup in uh, Toronto. Oh, We're like, man. oh, man, what What are you, like, what year is I don't this? know if he was saying that so he can, like, try and get some, like, nice defenseman to come over with him, too, to, to help him or out. Or is he trying to be nice? Like, how many how many actual teams are trying to sign him? Right, yeah, that so too. So maybe he was just trying to be like, you know. But at the same time, I don't think anyone says that. It's like someone saying, oh, like I, I think I had a shot with a cup in Edmonton this year. I'm yeah. like, no, you don't. Dude, I mean, I don't know. You really think Edmonton does not have a shot at the cup? No, not at all. Even with McDavid they and have, Dreisaitl, you they, saw the numbers they put up? They have the numbers. They have the guys. They just don't have an all-around team to yeah. get through it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. but And McDavid... Uh, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, you know, all like the top guys, they're great, but have they seen off? Uh, have they seen postseason? That's what have it is. They, they need that experience, playoffs? you know. It's to- totally, it's totally different from regular season. They can be absolutely gods in like the regular season and just light up points, but come postseason and the playoffs, it it'd be different. It's you see the same team. For seven games max. Think about think about a hey, in uh, our leagues when you see you when you play the same team like three or four times in one season, you end up fucking hating their guts. Yep. Imagine having to play them every other day exactly. for seven days straight. Right. right? You're gonna be, you're gonna be beat down. <laughs> you can't do it. Like, I fucking hate these guys. <laughs> as after I just said that, actually, as I was saying that, uh, one thing that came to mind was um, the Columbus Blue Jackets, where a lot of those guys <laughs> didn't know much about the uh, postseason. And we're just talking about how they kind of went through and swept the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. But when did they did they did they beat? Um, it was the Bruins next. Um, that next that following team that they faced was the Bruins, right? I think so. But wasn't it so they swept Tampa, and then they got swept by someone, right? Because didn't we play at Carolina? There were like four teams in a row that was like they beat they swept going. someone and then got swept the next round. Oof. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. that one postseason. Mm-hmm. But yeah, go on. Um, Columbus played the Bruins. Yeah, as I was saying that, I was just like, oh, we got we got Columbus team that um, a lot of these guys, same thing, was like postseason. This is like their first go. Yet, I think, again, Tortorella, who was the coach, just lit a fire on it up everyone's ass and says, hey, you guys can do this. Like, yeah. They think this is going to be easy because you're eight seed and have been doing well, but we're going to come faster and harder than them. And they did. They yeah, swept them. for sure. Um, 
So I talk shit about Edmonton Oilers, but they could do it too. Yeah. yeah. They can. Uh, I don't think the Canadians can because no. they're not – they're not all around. They're not an all around team. I think like if you're looking at this, like honestly, compared to the other divisions, like we know that like certain teams are gonna be contenders, like Tampa and um Colorado. But then in this division, I mean it's the Jets and then who? Right? Right. Because Ottawa's a dumpster fire. Uh Montreal's not looking great, like we said. Yep. Toronto, who the fuck knows what they're gonna do. I mean, they'll they'll light the lamp, but I like Toronto. They'll get their lamp lit too. Yep. Um, I mean, Ottawa, Calgary. I think Vancouver. Freddie Anderson has been unbelievable for Toronto. Yeah. You see his stats as uh, Anaheim a- Anaheim Ducks goalie. Uh, just a backup. I like, that, he, did he play with Gibson in Anaheim? Yes. I liked, I liked them together. Yeah. That was good. Gibson Gibson's unbelievable. Yeah, he's nasty. Um, but yeah, but then he went to Toronto, realized, hey, I'm I'm the guy. This, is, this team needs... You know, like a brick wall in the net. That's yeah. what they need. And I think Freddie Anderson, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie Anderson, more than proved himself in, in that in that on that team. Yeah, I think night after night, I, I'm sure he's had rough nights. And you know, being in the pros, being in the NHL, you're gonna have bad nights. But you got to the NHL because you're as good as what you know the NHL and what the management from like teams think you are. Yeah. So he's definitely proved himself, especially from a goalie, especially me perspective. Watching him, I was like, he's been he's been unbelievable. So I, I I can only see him as like the future of the team, and I hope I hope the team actually you know does well and like keeps going. I think they get, I think the Mitch Marner situation though, uh, he is a good player. I think the Mitch Marner situation really screwed him over because uh Mitch Mano was complaining about the um his contract right and wanted more money. Yeah, their cap is crazy, is dude. Insane. Toronto's not looking good. And I think I think Mitch, they play they pay four different players 10 million. It, it's absolutely or something insane. close to that. And Marner was added to it. So yeah. it's like it's I think that whole Marner situation <laughs> It's I, nuts. I, I get that Marner's a good guy, but I feel like if you're a Toronto management, you should have just let him go. You you looking for like an all around team again? Looking for an all around team that's gonna keep going. I get that Mitch Marner is good, but sometimes you gotta look at that and be like, okay, we were trying to work with you. Maybe you're not built for this team. We'll let you go, and maybe as we let you go, sign with that money. Maybe two, maybe three guys that you could probably bring to the uh, bring, yeah. Now you go, get some depth. Yeah, you, know? you could probably bring to the barn or or just keep in the Toronto. Maple Leafs organization and just like you know, get them going. Bruins do that all the time. They bring in no names. Constantly. Yeah, we're a big depth team. Yep. Like uh, uh, Cache yep. from uh, the Ducks when we picked him up. No one around here, the basic fan knew who he was. No. but he's that. He's that third line grinder. Like you know, mm-hmm. he's he's gonna add some depth to the team. That's just what it is. Right. You know? Exactly. Um, uh, although I'm trying to think of a Bruin that uh, there's a lot of Bruins like that. I was gonna say Pasternak, but Pasternak even in Providence was unfucking believable. Yeah, like we couldn't leave him down there. He was roasting the league, right? Oh, it was it was yeah. insane. But we did that with Tukarask for years too. Uh, there were the years with like Tim Thomas and like what was that Hanu Toivonen? Ha, sorry, Hanu Toivonen, uh, Philip Suave. You know, ever so often they'd bring up Rask, and he would be fucking lights out, and you're like, why the fuck do you guys keep yeah. putting him down? And finally, I get what they were doing. They're trying to like. They knew who he was, and they were trying to, like, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Let him like, grow a bit. Let him mature. grow and mature, mature down in the barn in Providence and bring him back up. And I think they did bring him up at a very good time. He took a rasp, brought us, uh, not last season, but the season before, all the way to the Stanley Cup yeah. Finals. Yeah. Uh, he was he was fucking lights out all the way until game. We lost in six, right? We lost in seven. It was game seven. To the Blue Jackets? Yeah. No, not the Blue Jackets. <laughs> Remember that last yeah, episode? Yeah, that, I fucked episode. up big time. I was trying to get into a Bennington uh, thing, but I think I said Columbus. And, yeah. Uh, that's why Matt didn't and have I any idea what I was talking about. And I fucked up too and just agreed with that. <laughs> we were re-watching that, and I was like, no. But I picked up on that, you did, too, yeah, last yeah. episode. I'm like, what do you mean Columbus yeah, won yeah. the cup? Yeah. There was a few things Blues, that, like... We, Blues Jackets. There's a few things that we <laughs> fucked up with last episode. So it's, it's like a learning process. Yeah. Um, we so have fun here. As, yeah. So as we're talking about goalies, um, let's talk about the trades and signs that I have an absolute list of. And uh, we'll start with Hopi, who I think was 
insane to me that Holpe two seasons ago won the <laughs> helped yeah. win the cup, and then all of a sudden they're just he's a free agent. Uh, Washington just signs Henrik Lundqvist. He's got nowhere to go, and the Canucks just sign him. Yeah. What was that deal? Uh, uh, I got it written down. Sorry. Um, the Hopi signs with Vancouver to a two-year, $4.3 million contract. Only two years. So huh? it's only two years. But uh, Vancouver is setting themselves up for success in the, in the long run, I think, though. I think they always do, but I, I don't know. I I think Jacob Markstrom, for sure, is the fucking backbone. One of the backbone, especially goalie of that team. Jacob, I love Jacob Markstrom. He's he's unbelievable. So I don't like I don't know what hope he's gonna bring. Either he's gonna be the backup, or I can't see them. I can't see him. Being I can't the backup, see them though. being the backup. Nor can I see Markstrom being the backup. So I don't know how well, they're if it's gonna 56 do that. Games are they doing a 23-23 split? So maybe. And then what do they do when playoffs come? I guess just see what the numbers just look see like. See what it looks like. Yeah, maybe. damn. But that. Health's always That's a thing what too. you were just talking about, 1A, 1B. I, I was just thinking in my in my head, like, I got to stop saying that because I think there's too many teams around the league that are doing it now, yep. and it's not really a rarity anymore. It's just what it is, just and if you don't is. have it, that's mm. why you're not up there with mm. the other good teams, you know? But I, I, I personally don't like that from, I guess, a fan of Jacob Markstrom's perspective that you got Holpe coming in at two— uh, just sign as like a two year, and what if he takes the leading role when Jacob Markstrom has been trying to prove himself worthy of like the the starting position and not getting it now? So piggybacking off of the one A one B thing, yeah, that's that's you as a fan of the goalie. Mm -hmm. The goalie is looking out for the team number one. So if he thinks that, like, there's no doubt in my mind that he doesn't think that having Holpe there is going to make the team better in the long run for the season. He's not playing 82 games a season. He knows that. So having a strong goalie whether or not you are the backup he's the backup whatever it may be having a strong number two to be there with you is going to help the team grow and you know get over that hump and get them to be what they were back in 2011 you know mm -hmm. yeah um yeah I, I agree with you on that um next uh i do want to talk about since we were talking about Holpe and the caps uh i do want to talk about lundquist uh he signed with the caps for a one year 1.5 million dollar contract um what does this say to you? I feel like the one year, one point five mil for a guy whose name is Henrik Lundqvist, who's been in the league for how long? Just years. Is this is this a contract that you sign, like Joe Thornton, that maybe says I might be retiring after this? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's I think it's a mutually beneficial contract. I think it's exactly what both people want. Um, I mean, you're obviously not going to give Henrik Lundqvist league minimum. He carries that swagger to his name that. You need to sign him, but uh, one year is just what he wants, what the team would want. You know, mm. you don't want to be locked down with a five-year contract with Lundqvist, and then he says, "I'm retiring." Yeah, and you're I'm paying done. him for four more years. Yep. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, what do you think of so Lundqvist? I've always loved Lundqvist. How do you how do you think he's been the past few years, especially with the Rangers? I think he's been great. I think um, I've, we've definitely seen better years from him. Yeah, uh, I think it's been like the past few years where he play, he's playing great, but not up to the potential that he's had before. So was it like I got I didn't look it up, but was it like a mutual thing where uh, New York was just like we don't want to sign you and Henrik looked somewhere else, or was it like I mean I'm I'm sure at the end of it with the the sitting in the playoffs and watching from some shitty ass seat. You know, um, I think it's all it's all just run its course. You know, it's just it is what it is. Yep. It's not you. It's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just yeah, I think that's that's what it is, honestly. So his career is just slowing down. I think uh, if if how do you say Georgiev, 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 yeah, Georgiev. If he came along sooner and Panarin came along sooner, like the Rangers could have been something. But now, yeah, it was just past his prime and. Well, they, didn't, they, they didn't have time to really jive yet either, you know? They now have Georgiev and Shesterkin. Yeah, Shesterkin's playing really well, too. Really well. And, I mean, those are two names that weren't there three years ago, and that's a 1A, 1B, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, and then all the of a sudden, like, these two brilliant names are yeah. just like, oh, yeah, these two guys are great. Yeah. Especially Georgiev. I think he came in a couple seasons ago, and you're like, who the hell is this guy? And was, like, a stunning backup. Yeah. And then Shesterkin randomly came in last season, yep. I think. And 
another another name that was just like holy shit this guy's great so i don't know if it was lundquist realizing that like these two like younger guys new younger guys might be taking the reins now for the ranges that maybe he'd be like it's your guy's turn to do it yeah well it was weird having uh three cows in the pen you know yeah so but uh it, it it's kind of a cool thing to look at too if you see like the average goals scored per year uh i did a report on it back in college actually and uh there, there is like, it, it's almost like, uh, I don't, I don't even know what you would call that. You know what I'm talking about, though. The like fucking a wave. Curve. Yeah, like a wave. Yeah, yeah. it, go, it goes up, it goes down, but the, it, it dipped like super low for the like, I think it was like 2008 until like 2015 or something like that. And they were looking into it, and they were like, goalies are getting like really good. This is the seasons that they were talking about changing the nets and, and fucking with everything to make oh, it yeah, so that you can score more. Oh yeah, the gear and everything. Yeah, yep, yep. cutting the gear back. But I think honestly, the goalies are just getting better and better. For sure. Um, these last few years, I think the skaters are. are like I just said, they're getting better and better now, and they're learning to beat these goalies. Yep. And it's just a constant battle of the goalies learn something new and new techniques, and then the skaters are catching up, learning it, right. and now learning the goalie style. Right. You know, and it's it's cool to see scoring's gone up the past th- uh, I think two or three years in a row. Mm-hmm. The uh, goalies have definitely been tested left and left and right, uh, and I think it's it's no when they were talking about the gear, and especially when they shrunk the gear for the NHL size. I think it was just. A normal process for goalies where are just like okay this is another thing i need to work on because mm-hmm. yep. being a goalie it's not like goalies it's not a thing where like you hit a spot and you're like okay this is it this is as far as i can go i can't learn anymore it's not like that you're constantly learning yeah you, you, like there's constantly new things coming up uh the rvh was is now huge a, like, innovation yeah huge innovation. and it's now the the norm and um what's the lacrosse the lacrosse goal now we're now yeah, yeah, how we got to defend the wraparound up top now. Up top, you know now. that's crazy. I, I see, I have been seeing on Instagram and YouTube. I've been seeing goalie coaches explain how to do it, and a bunch of these goalies that are showing how to do it are like six five. So like they take they're up there most already, of the net, yeah, most of the net. Where it's like <laughs> here, you, you take your shoulder and, like and you stand it. up, and, me and you are like, Ugh, Ugh, come on. <laughs> Uh, so the first time I've ever felt old on the ice, dude, uh, before COVID hit and everything, this was like one of my last skates before everything went to shit. Um, I was on the ice with like, you know, normal pickup crew and like maybe two or three, like 11, 12, 13 year old kids. The fucking kid brought the puck up on his stick <laughs> to, to give me a little cross goal. He got it all the way out front and it fell off his stick here and he slams his stick against the post to put it in and it, it fell in front of me. I was like, Are you fucking kidding me, dude? <laughs> A fucking twelve year old just did that. Like <laughs> it's been done in the NHL twice. You know what I mean? That's fucked. I've we've seen we've seen I've seen too, but we've seen years ago we used to do this I, to this day I think about it, I'm like, why the fuck did we do this? There was this Saturday, the morning ice in Saugus. Do you remember that years ago? Was yeah, it ten like to twelve. Ten to twelve. And then during the week it was ten to one I used to do. Yep. Yeah, and, and it was free, obviously. <sighs> It was such a fucking shit show. Yeah. Saugus Rink here in Massachusetts is fucking. Oh, that was at night, right? Terrible. Yeah, that no, was at... that was that was in the morning. Okay, okay. I used to go in the morning, and the ice is so fucking bad. I hated it. Yeah. And like, uh, I, I was honestly learning to skate and like learning to play goalie. So like, oh, that's I why fucking we loved went. it. Yeah, that's why we went. I was a moron. And I didn't know that there were like rinks down here. Like, you I didn't sh- know you could skate everywhere. I yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. like, I was like, oh, fucking hockey town. I'll go there. Oh, okay. Forty five minutes, so I can go play with shit bums. That makes sense why we went there now, but I still like we could have found something better. Oh yeah, we could have. I just didn't know. I was like green as grass, dude. Oh, so fucking bad because there'd be mornings where like you'd get there and they'd be like, I don't know, there'd be like ten goalies and you'd be like, oh, okay, this is yeah, cool. two two I two sides of ice, right? Four guys on, and then you have fucking two goalies on each bench. There were fucking it was eight insane. of us. Insane, yeah, nuts. And we came across for a few weeks. Do you remember, like, there was this kid that was, like, nine, ten years old that was an absolute god? Yeah, yeah, him? yeah. I'm like, dude, where do you play? And it was like, we had guys around our age at the time, which was how old? 19? I was probably, yeah, yeah, I was probably, yeah, 19 or 20, yeah. So we had guys around our age, even older, and this kid was, like, 12, just dangling Dustin around. Us, yeah. every, every it was hilarious. One. It was making us look like shit. It looked like fucking, honestly, it looked like when you have, like, the super fast player in NHL and he's just wheeling everyone. Right. I love <laughs> I love coming across those kids, though, because I've, I've come across them, too, before, where um, um, so, some leagues 
where like you know after after the game you have like free ice so like the guys would be like oh we'll throw our kids on there just yeah like, hey can you stay on the ice for a bit let me let's shoot around so i'm like okay cool so there's been a few guys that just like they bring their kids on not knowing that these kids are like playing for um the some of it all stars yeah, yeah what they're yeah. called and yeah. like the uh so it just get, you just get lit up so even though some of some of it all i feel like it's the all stars god Couldn't i tell you that. yeah uh, they have a Russian coach, and so like when I play Stinky Socks, uh, the pickup there in Somerville, uh, a lot of the nights you'd get there and they'd be practicing. So I used to get there kind of early just to like just to watch. And the Russian coach that was there, they have their own like little training section in like the corner. Yeah, of the I rink. know what you're talking about. Yep. And um, the tr- like these kids, I hold like 10 years old, 12 years old, and like watching them like skate and shoot, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Because I mean, they they're not unlearning habits and learning the new stuff like we are they're yeah. literally learning it day one new this is how we do it right you know? so you know learning and unlearning so when i first started uh the butterfly uh butterfly technique was how old were you when you first started playing goalie like consistently i know like back in the day they would just give one fucking random kid I'd here's the goalie like pad 16 17 oh okay yeah um but when i started it was a bunch of guys showing me it was still like the stand-up hybrid type of thing because there was the butterfly, but it's not what it is yeah. at all yep. today. I know what you're talking about. So I grew up learning basically hybrid. I still classify myself as hybrid. Like I go down the butterfly, but if I get if I start getting tired, I have no problem at all like standing up and just like because I know how to play that position. But that fucked me so hard in the long run because uh, for the ECHL, uh, I tried out two times, one in Foxborough. Um, oh, fuck what was it? one in Mansfield, I think too, and both times, um, both times, you know, I'd get tired. You, you're, you know, your goalie, you're trying out, and so I just stand up. I would make the saves, but I had the pl- and, and sorry to interrupt. Honestly, like from a coach's perspective, watching you, it probably looked lazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he played like this when he's not tired, and now he's doing this. Now you know, doing this, even yeah. if it's not a laziness thing, you know. Yeah. But it was just like I can do both. Yeah, and yep. I, I I don't think I was showing that I, exactly. I was just yeah. That's why I was just thinking in my head. But both times I'd have like players screaming, like shooters screaming at me to go down. I'd have coaches coming over and be like, "Hey, play the butt," because this is when the butterfly is becoming a thing. They want to see how you can. They, execute yeah, they want to know how I could do it. And I'm like, I'm trying to tell them like this is just how I play. And because of that, you know, I didn't I didn't make any of the teams because they were looking for the butterfly style. Now the butterfly style at the time there was no. I guess there was some, but like the butterfly slide and stuff, it's not as advanced as it is today. Where you see a bunch of the goalies, they'll slide a cl- slide across, stop, and be able to like maneuver themselves and slide back to the post. Mm-hmm. If you slid, you were just sliding one way, and yeah. then you had to get back up and see cut and stuff. Yep, yep. So it it was that. So my whole hockey career, if you want to call it, was just constantly like learning and figure out new yeah. ways to do you, it you you kind of came in i guess like you're born at the wrong time you know because yeah. you need to learn the old way and now you have to relearn do the new way exactly you know? so when i was yeah exactly so as i was playing and learning like again it was the hybrid butterfly position but when it came time to uh try out for teams that's when you know the butterfly and that's you know that's what they wanted and i i think i found my it's weird the men's league the the bear league i think you find you find your um you find your own little ways of doing everything there because no one's asking you of, of like oh God, no one's yeah. telling you yeah. of like what to play if so they are like, they're a dick yeah exactly <laughs> so and it's funny because you'll see a lot of bear you, you go to like a lot of bear league games where you'll see guys uh the mass hockey league last summer or two summers ago there was this goalie i think he was around our age but he he was stand up, full stand up, and I don't think I ever saw him go down once. He just like stood up, uh, played the puck like Marty Bordeaux type. And I'm like, so it's just like you see different. To, and yeah. that's the greatest part about being a goalie too is, although the teams are looking for like a certain thing, like butterfly or well, I won't say hybrid, but now everything's butterfly. Um, there's so many different ways of doing it, and people people's bodies dictate how they're comfortable doing it. I think everything is being comfortable at where you are. And I think um, on the YouTube page, um, Stop at Goaltending, uh, for, I think it's on the Pure Hockey's YouTube page, um, they do a great job. Uh, John Elkin 
did it too. I was going up to Toronto uh, to do the John Elkins goalie school, and I loved him because he was a goalie. He's a goalie coach for um, a bunch of like NHL teams before doing um, being up in Toronto and uh, Mississauga, and um, he would. It, it, he's not one of those guys that are just like, all right, here's a bunch of like the guys on the ice that's going to tell you what to do. Like you saw him on the ice, just like checking everyone out. And there was a few times where either I was having a problem with one of the drills that he would come over and be like, what are you comfortable with? Which I never heard before. I was like, well, I'm comfortable doing this. And he goes, all right, let's work on that. But that's not going to work for you. You need to be like this, and we'll go from there with like. Yeah, he's taking what you're doing and, and molding it to make it work. Exactly, better. and I, th- yeah. I think there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of goalie coaches, goalie schools out there that want you to play a certain way. They even though it's uncomfortable, they want you to do this, and I think that's not the right way to go because goalies have so many different styles, so many different ways of playing. Uh, you can tell, like, by the gear they wear, the sticks, the, the masks they wear, that we all have different styles, different ways of playing, uh, that I think goalie coaches need to learn to realize that and learn to work with what they got and what, what the goalie's got and just say, what are you comfortable with? We'll work on that. Um, you know, and I think I think there's very few and far in between uh, goalie schools that work on that, and I think that needs to be more of a thing now. Well said. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my piece on that. Um, uh, we were, I wanted to. This is going to be an awful segment. I, I had we were talking about slow, and uh, uh, I, I can't think we're talking about your um, Joe Thornton and his slow career, or something like that. And oh, I, wanted, yeah, yeah. I wanted to jump over to slow because I want to go back to Holpe. Um, Hopi had an issue. When was this? A few weeks ago. Some had to be like early November, in October I think, right? or something yeah. like that. Uh, Hopi, <laughs> Hopi, sound with Vancouver. Him and his wife and kids. They're going up to Vancouver, and they got stopped at the border for their uh, two pet tortoises. Who the fuck has pet tortoises? <laughs> What a rich person thing to do. (laughs) Fucking asshole. Uh, So (laughs) we'll have uh, Billy throw on, um, throw up the photo of the two tortoises on the screen here. Uh, His wife was doing all like the tweeting and everything, trying to uh, get this thing going. But it got to the point where um, she had a like, the animal, certain like animal, like. um, Federal Wildlife Commission or some shit. Something like that to like. Get permission to bring these tortoises into Vancouver. Yeah, because you're you're basically taking a wild creature and removing it from its habitat, even though its habitat was your fucking house, fucking house <laughs> in, in a cage, <laughs> right? So it didn't make sense. But I, I need to look up memes for this. If if any of you listening want to look up the memes, go right ahead. Yeah, hit us on Twitter with it. Yeah, exactly. Or our Discord. Our Discord will be on in the description below. But uh, so his wife and the kids went. They. Went to Vancouver, you know, they because they're moving there, they went to the house and everything. And Hopi stayed back and with the two tortoises just at the border. What a good dad, huh? So, <laughs> <laughs> what a good tortoise dad. So, I, I'm, I'm only thinking. So, when I read that, the only thing in my mind was okay, Hopi stayed back with like the two tortoises. But the only thing I'm picturing is the wife and kids. They took like his luggage and everything. So he it's just took the him. car. He's just fucking standing there. It's just it's not even standing there. He's like in the middle of the airport, just like crisscross, like just sitting on his ass in the middle of the airport, just like holding two turtles. And like there had to been like some fans are just like the f- is that Hopi? What the fuck? Like it just brings like how the goalies are weird. Like, yeah, yeah. They're just like whole oh, another level. Oh yeah, this is what his That's postseason funny. training looks like. He's just holding like two tortoises. <laughs> like you okay? You need to be the turtle. I need to be one. <laughs> with a turtle <laughs> he does the uh oh, speaking about turtles um was it monty barone or was it oh then another go- i think it was monty barone uh he turtle like that was like his pre-game like thing where he he turtles so like you know how you can with like the chest protector you kind of like yeah, you yeah. put your head like all the way in i guess that's that's what he did and that's they showed him how he did it, and somehow he got his entire head like in his jersey. The mask, the helmet too. No, no, no. He just he didn't have yeah, the yeah, mask, okay. but like his whole head was. I'm like, I don't know how the hell you did that, <laughs> and how bad does that stink? I yeah, know, right. we, I know, we get used to our own smell, but I don't know. Out on the ice, I wouldn't think twice to do it. You know, I yeah. mean, I put it on the locker room. You take it off after a game. <laughs> I'm not like, oh fuck, you know, eh, whatever. 
my own filth. Oh. <laughs> it only stinks and it doesn't stink until it stinks someone like when says you, get home. you stink. Yeah. yeah. Or like on the car ride. Oh, I, don't, I don't shower at the rink either, even before COVID. No. I never did. I used shower to. Shower right when I get I home. used to, and some of the showers are fucking disgusting, so I was like, eh, I'll wait. Yeah. But I, like, I bought like flip-flops for it and shit, but I'm just like, no. I could just drive home and shower. I'm 15 yeah. minutes away. It'd be like zero degree weather, and I'll like go home with like all like the uh, cow windows down, just like just, just to air everything Yeah, out. yeah. <laughs> um, so... Back to the trades and signs and everything. Wanted to get to a few of these tonight. Uh, more to come maybe in the next few episodes because we have an absolute list. But uh, the Pens, they re-signed Tristan Jarrett to a three-year three year $10.5 million contract. That got paid. He got paid. He got that money. So it's it's Tristan Jarrett and Casey DeSmith. Is mm-hmm. that it? Yep. So you got Matt Murray. Uh, now, now in Ottawa, and you got Flurry now in Vegas. I like Tristan Jari. I like Casey DeSmith, but what? And, and Murray came from their farm program too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's fucking crazy. The Penn's farm program is just killing it. It's obviously, insane, you know. But what happened to? I love again. I love love Tristan Jari. He, him, and Casey DeSmith. Uh, for the past few years, we're, like, fighting each other. Like, it was a little race where Tristan Jari was ahead, and then Casey DeSmith went ahead, and then it yeah, was yeah. back to Tristan Jari. So, both goalies are really good. I don't know if Tristan Jari... I think Tristan Jari now has the starting position, and I think Casey DeSmith finally has at least uh, a backup position, a full-time backup position now with the Pens organization. Uh, but that brings us right to Matt Murray, uh being in Ottawa, and and he got traded to Ottawa in exchange for for Jonathan Gruden, and a 2020 second round pick. Uh, right away, he gets a four year, 25 million dollar contract extension. Uh, for a goalie, just getting a, I don't never heard of Gruden. So yeah, I've never heard of. I never heard but of him. A, a second round pick's good. Second round pick's I mean, good. Buy low, sell high, right? But in my eyes with Murray, right? But you got Matt Murray, who has won the cup twice. With uh, just Pittsburgh once, Pittsburgh? right? I feel. I think it's twice. I think he was with uh, with Flurry last time. Oh, so Flurry won it once with Murray backing him and up, with and Murray, Murray won it once Murray with Flurry again. Yeah. Yep. Um, but you got that. So this whole situation kind of just like it's a head scratcher because Flurry was just the head of the Penguins for so long, and he saw that Matt Murray. At the time when they were, you know, when they were playing each other, it was like, all right, Matt Murray's now the guy. He's now taking the starting position, and I think that's why he took, uh, that's why he took the ex- uh, expansion draft and went to Vegas. Mm-hmm. They and Vegas Mario paid him, him a shit ton, mm-hmm. and Matt Murray came in and he played phenomenal. You're like, all right, his he's the guy, and I think post he got a concussion, and I think after that, where I was starting to notice things that he did that I was like. You know, what are you doing? One of the main things I always complain about when I see Mari is um, not not so much as RVH, but if a shot's coming, if a shot's coming low, uh, just his positioning where, like, uh, he puts his glove low, like, right in front of his pad. And I've seen so many goals go in glove side because his glove is, like, right in front of his pad and it just go, goes in glove side where I'm like, why are you – why is you? Why are you all of a sudden just like positioned like that? It doesn't make sense to me. Are you trying to glove it off like your pad when your pad's just gonna block it off anyway? So mm, yeah, uh, that <clears throat> that never made sense to me. And I loved Matt Murray. I hope I, I hope things get. I know concussions are huge. Uh, I've had three myself. Uh, two being hockey, one being from a uh, car accident. And uh, I could tell you that. You know, after a while, it, it starts to hit you. There's a lot of ums and stuff that you hear, and me just trying to figure things out. And I, I could tell you right now, it's it's probably from the concussions. Mm. Um, so, and it's been about concussions. Uh, uh, even worse was Mark Savard. Do you remember when he got his? Yeah, that was bad. And it, he was the the worst thing. Like for when he got his, and when it got bad, like. They still don't really have any hard science on like how to do concussions. They used to do dark rooms. They used to do light rooms. They tell you to do your normal life. They want you to do this, that, the other thing. They don't really know yet. They're doing a lot of research, and the NFL's been a big 
like promoter of it because of how physically contact or how heavy hitting their league is when yeah. it comes to it. Um, but they really don't have a lot of hard science about what to do when you get one and how to, you know, be better, you know? Right. Um, so I think just Mark Savard's timing when he got his was, it couldn't have been worse. Yeah. Uh, what year was that? <clears throat> Cause I remember hearing a story where like he was going to the garden, but he was going like South toward like the Cape and, it, and then he realized like halfway through yeah, it was like, going yeah. the wrong way. They had to be like, Oh nine. Right. I think it was Oh nine when it started to get bad. Oh eight. That makes sense. Something like that. He was a big part of like them getting to that 2011 cup run, but didn't end up getting to partake in it. You yeah. Know? It's, I liked like, him a lot. I love, I, yeah, I love Savvy. Uh, he's doing something right now. He's, uh, I can't remember what team he's in, but he's he's part of some, uh, oh, he's with another Bruin too. They, with like Marco Sturm or something like that. He's doing something. Mm. Um, anyway, off, off, while well, still kind of on topic with the concussions and how you said it was different, my first concussion was in high school, one of my first games. Uh, this guy had an absolute bomb off the blue line and at the time i had like this just hand me down ccm mask it's the worst my first set of gear i was fucking feeling everything too yeah and it got me right in the dome and this is like in the beginning of the first and all i can remember is like blacking out and like flashes and i played the whole game like i would get off at each period and all i remember is like throwing up in like the the garbage can jesus christ and my my coach would be like, you're right. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I played the rest of the game. I didn't get checked at all because it wasn't a thing. Like, you don't – it was just like, oh, you just got fucking – you got hit. You got wrong, like, yeah. You got wrong, yeah, exactly. So it wasn't it wasn't a thing. I didn't even get checked. I was fucked for, like, a few days. Like, uh, a few days of just, like, me just, like, not knowing where the fuck I was. Mm. And then I got back into it. Second time, again, was high school. This was senior year, and I got rocked right in the again right in the dome. But so, I had, wait, the first one, you never got checked at all? Never got checked you at all. You didn't even know if you had one, but you think you did? I, I, I think I did, but at the time, it wasn't like, it didn't seem like, I think at the time, you just, oh, there's nothing you could do. You just mm. got to just, like, just kind of deal with it. Yeah. And you just had the headaches and shit. The second time I got hit, I got rocked, and... Um, my mother took me to the hospital and th- I think the doctor at the time, I don't think they could do anything. They're just like, Oh, take these like headache med- medications. And like their big thing that I remember was don't watch TV too much yeah, or like, light. Yeah, uh, yeah, don't be too close. And like, that was it. And then the third one, which happened in 2019. So last, Damn, last year, year well. yeah. Uh, for some reason, that, that was worse. Maybe because I didn't have a mask or anything. Some guy cut me off, and I slammed right into him. And my head just slammed against the, the steering wheel. And uh, it, was just, it was just a weird feeling because I think I was just in shock the whole time. So when I got out, I was fine, thankfully. Uh, but I think I was just in shock from the car accident, and I was cold. Like, I got back to the house, and I was just... I knew I was in shock, so like I threw on blankets. I'm just freezing, and uh, again, this is from po- uh, from pre, you know, concussions. I didn't think to go to the hospital at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because the the doctor's just gonna tell me to take uh, yeah. headache medications, and that's it. It's come a long way, but I, I still don't think there's anything concrete. Like I don't know what they would tell you now. You yeah, know? I can I could tell you. So uh, me being me was just like, all right. Maybe I just need to get the blood flowing, you know, just to warm up. So I went to the gym, like, almost right away. I did an hour of cardio at the gym. I still felt cold, so I went downstairs and did some weights. My brother's friend, who knows me from the gym, um, we were talking. I was like, hey, how are you? And I was telling him, I was like, oh, yeah, I was just in an accident. But I think I'm in shock. I can't seem to fucking, like, get warm. Wait, wait, same day? Same day. It was like. What the fuck? It was what like a, it was what like time a, was the accident? It was like an hour. Uh, it happened at, like, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I think I was at the gym at, like, 12. Was your car fine? No, it was fucking totaled. But I used my girlfriend's car. <laughs> just wreck one car. Hey, I'm going out for a spin. I'll see you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> ah, I got to warm up. Uh, yeah, so I went downstairs, started working out, and the guy who. Uh, I can't remember his name, but he was just like... Um, it's a concussion. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> it wasn't even that. He just looked at me and goes, you need to go to the hospital. I'm like, no, it's just it's just a concussion. Or, and I'm just in shock, like, because that's just how yeah. I've been. Like, that's how people have told me um, about how concussions are. So I didn't do it. And then I got home, and around, like, 8 o'clock, I'm still freezing. I've got, like, this blistering fucking headache. And I'm looking at my girlfriend, I'm like... 
I think it's, I think I gotta go to the hospital. So mm-hmm. I went to the hospital and it's 180 from how they treated me the past two times. Damn. The first time I didn't go, but the second time it was just like, don't look at a screen. This time it was a CT scan. Uh, they checked my pulse. They checked my head. They, uh, they told me everything about like, um, uh, mental resting where it's just like, you know, you, you close your eyes and just like, uh, like you meditate rest your brain almost. and like kind of meditate and stuff. And like, there's this huge thing about like, um, Oh God, it was like a, a way to sleep too, where just like, um, I think it was like, uh, an ice bag underneath uh, your pillow or whatever to make it cool to like Damn. to cool your head and stuff. I'm like, this is it. So yeah, yeah. The concussions have gone a long way from like what they used to be. And, uh, thank God for that. Cause I'm fucking living evidence of why you need to treat concussions seriously because it wasn't after till my third one that now, they're telling me this is serious. Damn, you yeah. really need to check yourself. Now I think about that time, my first time, where I'm just like after each period, just throwing up and blacking out, just like thinking that was fine and just normal. So, mm-hmm. so, so that was 2019. Then you said senior year of high school, so that would be what 2012. 2009. Oh, 2009. Okay. And then the first one was 2007, 2008. So okay. it was pretty close to each other. Yeah, I was just thinking about the uh, the time frame, the time gap of like how far medicine came. Like mm. you know, those ten years. It, it's different. It's insane. Yeah. Um, came at the pricey bill though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Uh, so we're talking, yeah. So we'll go, we'll go back to Matt Murray because we we're talking about his concussion. The last uh, one we want to talk about is Robin Leonard. We talked about him last episode. Uh, Robin Leonard signed a five-year, twenty-five million dollar contract with the Knights. Uh, we also found out through the Knights that Flory will not be traded, uh, but Flory does have two seasons remaining on a three-year, twenty-one million dollar contract. What does that say about what's going on right now in Vegas, goalie was? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you look back at uh, the tweet, did we talk about that last episode? I know me and you have spoken yep, about it. Yep. But, uh, yeah, the tweet with uh, Flurry's got the sword through his back when uh, Leonard took over the starting position for um, the Vegas Golden Knights in the playoff run. Uh, Flurry says he didn't tweet it, blah, blah, blah. The agent probably did it i think like that's not a flurry thing to do um but him signing there i think it says that we're going right back to everything i always talk about the 1a 1b you know Mm -hmm. that's what vegas wants that's what vegas needs and vegas isn't a team to be shy about shipping someone if they want to you know what i mean so if they want to move flurry they'll move flurry but right now i think why would you i think it's good to have both of them it's good to have both but what what would you think of flurry's perspective is he thinking about moving now i think at the end of the day all these 1a 1b goalies can't look at it like that you got to look at it as like I have a very good chance of getting a cup here. I think our team is set up for success, and I want us to be as good as possible. Mm-hmm. Like the like, all right. Look at it like the way I look at it from from an outside perspective is I can be on this team and be a backup, but play almost the same number of games, or I can go to another team and be the starter and not even make the fucking playoffs. Right. I mean, I don't know. That that's how I look at. it. I'd rather be personally on the team that's me and the other guy are are fine, both splitting games, both being good goalies and making a run rather than being, I get all the shots, I bust my balls, and then I have this shit-ass backup, and we don't even make the playoffs. I don't know. That's how I look at it. It's a good look. It's a good Mm -hmm. look. I like it. I'm just trying to think, and no, no, you're right, because I'm trying to think in Flory's perspective, but Flory's Flory's perspective is very veteran perspective, because like last episode, we talked about that tweet where Flory was just like, take that down it's yeah, yeah. not what i believe in what's going on right now and i think as much as these goalies are individuals they're as much as of a part of the team as the rest of the team is like they have the the most team mentality mm-hmm. you know i mean they are the team at the end of the day mm-hmm. right right um so to f- almost finish this off the last topic we do want to talk about tonight is because now we're on robin leonard uh so you got robin leonard's tweet who's he calling out logan paul jake paul yeah, the initial the initial tweet was uh well it was Logan uh no, Jake Paul gets a uh, knockout on Nate Robinson who is not a not a boxer obviously. Um he's flexing about it going off and Kane, Leonard and Ryan Reeves all had tweets about it. I mean, none of them were as big as Evander Kane, but uh Leonard calls him out and said, "I'll fuck you up." 
Reeves calls him out and says, step in the ring with me. But Kane is like all over this guy's case. He's calling out Jake Paul, which is the, he's he's 2-0 and fighting. He had a TKO. And then this was a knockout against Nate Robinson, who's, like I said, not a fighter. So these guys are looking looking to, you know, actually get something going, like a, a rough and rowdy situation at right. Barstool or something. Um, and then Logan Paul, out of nowhere, Jake, I don't think Jake ever answered Evander Kane. Logan Paul calls Evander Kane out and says he'll do it. He's like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, I'll fight him. I don't give a shit. So Kane's calling him out. It's going back and forth. Logan Paul's 0-1 against, uh, I think the guy's name's KSI, some YouTuber. I don't really know much about either any hmm. of these people outside of the NHL. I didn't even hear about this. Yeah. So um, he he's fought before. It was a, a majority draw, which is, there's always three judges in boxing. Two of the judges said it was a draw, and one of the judges said this guy won or that guy won. But that vote doesn't matter. It's a majority draw is what they call it. Right. Um, so, I mean... Neither of these guys have crazy fighting experience. Right. Um, I've heard that I don't know which one because I'm not too in depth on this, but I've heard one of them is like not to be fucked with. Like he's actually a really good boxer. But both Ryan Reeves and Kane obviously train boxing because that's what they do. They they'll fight, you know, and it's great cardio workout. Right. I don't know if Robin Leonard's doing that. I think Robin Leonard was just trying to like stir the pot, you know. I'm I messed up when we first came in here because we were talking about what to talk about tonight, and I brought this up, and you brought this up too. This it was, was big. It's big. It you was know? big. And so when we were, I was talking about the Robin Lena tweet, and I was like, oh, he must have been in one. And then you were just like, nah, dude, he's he's sober he's now. Sober. You're like, oh, okay. This <laughs> he is- just looks like he's fucking constantly on something. He's fucking, he's got that mean look, dude. He's got he's, that look. That, he's a scary looking dude. psycho look, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. That'd be a good fight. That'd be that'd be a good fight. I um, I don't care about the Logans, the Jake. Yeah, I'm not well, into uh, it the Logan. Sorry, the Pauls, the Logan. Yeah. No. Yeah, Logan Paul, Logan Jake Paul. Paul, Jake Paul. I don't, I don't care for him at all. But when this came up, I ended up looking at uh, Jake Paul is the one who uh, fights, right? Yep. It was, yeah. I was watching him fight. I was like, okay, so he can like he can back up what he's talking about. Yeah, like, yeah he, he actually can. trains and he actually like fights. So I'm like, all right, I can give him that credit. And I think um, he's internet too. So like to get it's like it's like boxing too. You're gonna go after like other boxes, and you know you're talking shit for months on end before. Yeah, you fight. go for the big name, the big showboat. You know. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know how, like, if it could even happen. Like, if Andrew Kane's under contract with the NHL, are they just going to let him go fucking step into a boxing ring? You know what I mean? No, and I think that's the problem with all this. It's just, it's it's all talk. It's not going anywhere. I don't think so. And yeah. it's, it's just, it's, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's something just to talk about. For it's the time funny, being. but I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not like crazy interested in it. Like, no, if it happened, I'm not either. It'd be cool. I'm not going to pay to see it. I've, I've never bought a pay per view because no. you can see what happened the next day for free. Right. You know, I don't know. I'm but not, I'm not down for that. I wouldn't, I don't care about it. Uh, let me say that again. I don't care about Evander Kane fighting um, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, whatever. Yeah. Um, but if for some reason, uh, if for some reason the Knights had zero problems saying, yeah, Robin Lennon, go ahead, do it. Yeah, I'm right. like, all right, where do I sign up to see this shit? Yeah, really. I, I, I think I'd rather see Reeves or Kane where it would be like an actual fight, you know, yeah. like people that actually train to do that, you know? Right. Uh, Robin Lennon's a huge <clears throat> boxing guy. Oh, he is. Big boxing guy. Like, like follows it or boxes? Like, follows it. I don't know if he boxes, okay. to be honest, but I know he follows it. So How do you know that? Um, oh, God. I was, I was, it was... I think goalie Chris Net. I think were, he was talking about because I think when um, I think when that originally came up, I think goalie Chris Net was talking about how uh, on his social media and stuff he does talk about it a lot and like that's what he does. Damn. Okay. Uh, I gotta look more. He's into just like that. involved in it. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta look more into that. I might be wrong because I I think it might be Evander Kane that I'm mixing him up with. It, it was one of the players, but I I could swear it's Robin Lena, and because Robin Lena is a he's a big dude. Like, he is. Yeah. Yeah. So to see him fight. I mean, all three of these guys are big boys, yeah. you know? I mean, I think Reeves probably has 20 pounds on both of those two, but yeah. they're all huge. I think the only problem for uh, for Van Aken and Rob Leonard is that Jake Paul is not wearing a jersey, so you can't, like, grab it. And yeah, just, like, it's, throw it's different, but that's yeah. that's why I mentioned that they train boxing off ice, because just, like, when you fight someone on ice, it's, it's not the same as a fight. Like, no. you could be some some bum in men's league that's, that's destroying everybody every week, but... You go into a bar fight, you're screwed. Oh, it's, yeah, it's completely yeah, different, yep. you know. The ice, the ice, and everything you can kind of whip them around and stuff. Yeah, just can't... even the way you're standing, like the yeah. way you're supporting yourself, you're throwing, you know. Exactly. So you can, you can come out of it pretty scathed. Mm. But I thought this was pretty cool. Um, I, I know that we've talked about it before. Uh, you see, like personalities around the, the league popping up now, and this is a, a big example of 
someone putting themselves out there and Evander Kane just on social media just I'll fuck you up yeah like, that's fucking <laughs> that's like making a personality for yourself one on one exactly just tell someone you'll fuck them up um, <laughs> they they talk about that so uh, I don't know if I told this to you talked about it last episode but uh, oh probably not because it was last week where I got it uh, I randomly went on the PlayStation Network and NHL 21 I don't know if yeah, it's still yeah you texted there. me dude it's fucking not it's not oh, on sale anymore not selling. it went from $60 yeah. to $30 I couldn't believe it and <laughs> I was like oh my god like I bought it right yeah. away fuck, and it's the, fir- it. it's the first NHL game that I've had since NHL 15 I haven't touched oh really yeah I haven't touched but I've been wanting to play so uh, I randomly went on because Kazmir Kaskasuo who we were talking about who I want to get more into with YouTube goalies he was playing it, and I was like, "Oh, it's it's got to be on PlayStation somewhere." So I looked it up on just to see how much it was. I think you you timed it so like you were basically looking up Black Friday Cyber Monday like in that time frame. I, I think so. Randomly. I got lucky as yeah. all hell, and it was fifty percent off. It was thirty dollars. I'm like, I am getting yeah, this. For sure. And that game is so worth it. Yeah, the it's, last one I played was nineteen. It's cool shit. Yeah. Oh, not, 19. I don't know what the difference is because it's, it's like, not much, man. 15. Honestly, like. EA kind of sucks. They could honestly release these games as an update like most other games do. Yeah. Fucking most games are free now and they just update them. It's yeah. like, oh, it sucks. Mm-hmm. The, $60 for the same game every year. I like how uh, in the you do the become a pro. Mm-hmm. So obviously I picked the goalie, but the only, uh, the only gripe, I wouldn't say gripe, but one thing I want is to have like a first person view. Especially as a goalie, I, I want to see, like, I, a cool per, first person view. I don't know if you view. could, though. Like, you'd need to, like, I don't know, maybe, like, a VR thing, like, turn your head. But, like, the over-the-shoulder, I like that. Yeah. Personally, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you need to get that because I love that. You're on PlayStation, right? PlayStation. I'm going to get it. We'll fucking whoop your ass online. Yeah. I'll yeah. whoop your ass. Bet. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> Come over there and whoop your ass, boy. <laughs> um. So, what do you think? Does that wrap it up? Yeah. That's about it, I think. All right. Covered it all. So, like I said, that wraps it up this week for this week's episode. Special thanks to James Scales for the logos for this podcast. Uh, His social media and website will be in the description below. See you all next week. Hey, Martin, you're the better goalie. No, Kerry, you're the better goalie. No, Jacob, you're the better goalie. You're the better goalie. You're the better goalie.